I'm Alice. I'm Greg. And today we're walking through Coyoacan. We're on our way to Frida Kahlo's house. And we have a special guest with us. Allison. Allison Wolf. And she is, it's her first time to Frida Kahlo's house. We've been there many times before. But if you haven't been there and you want to come with us, you're invited. You'll have to pay us later. <laughs> <laughs> To visit the Frida Kahlo Museum, or the Casa Azul as it's known here, buy your tickets online, arrive a few minutes early, and plan to wait in line. Visiting Frida Kahlo's home doesn't feel like your average trip to a museum. That's because it's a much more intimate experience. Visiting the Casa Azul allows you to see the artist, not just the art. Frida was born within these walls. She lived, loved, painted, and eventually died here. The Casa Azul doesn't house the biggest collection of Frida Kahlo paintings. It only has a few. Like an incomplete painting called My Family, which depicts her family tree, or the portrait of her beloved father, Guillermo Kahlo, with his big box camera. There are lesser known works here, but this museum offers a different experience. For Frida and Diego, collecting and displaying art was as important as making it. We walked through a room filled with ex votos, small paintings, usually painted on a thin sheet of tin. They describe an occasion when a saint or a religious figure has interceded on the devotee's behalf. Oftentimes, the events are seen as miraculous, and the paintings themselves are a sort of thank you card. There is joy and sadness in this house. Frida's kitchen is trimmed in bright yellow and cobalt blue. It's inviting and warm. Little clay pots have been arranged to spell out the names of Diego and Frida, who spent a great portion of their married life in this house. I imagine Frida cooking and overseeing the preparation of Diego's favorite meals. The studio seems frozen in time. The paint tubes are full. The artist supplies seem to be waiting for the artist to return. An easel is propped in front of a wheelchair where on a good day, Frida might have set up to paint. On a bad day, she might paint in bed instead. The bed in the day bedroom, yes, there's a day and a night bedroom. It looks like one in the Sueño painting. I feel the absence of the Judas atop her bed. Walking through the house, we feel as though we're walking through Frida's life. She grew up here. From the upstairs studio, I glance into the backyard, and I can picture a young Frida riding a tricycle in the backyard, an activity that would temporarily cease when at the age of six, she would be struck by polio. She spent nine months in bed and the polio damaged her right leg, which grew thinner and shorter than her left leg and caused her a great deal of pain throughout her life. As childhood turned into adolescence, Frida's father encouraged her to play sports in hopes that she would recover her strength, but the sports would never have a chance to serve their intended purpose because she received another devastating physical blow. She was still a teen when a bus trip with her high school boyfriend changed her life. A streetcar crashed into their bus. The injuries from that collision nearly killed her. After weeks in the hospital, she was released to recover here at the Casa Azul. Bedridden again, she wrote letters to the boyfriend, begging him to visit, but he didn't. Instead, his family sent him away to school. But Frida's love problems were just beginning. She hadn't met Diego Rivera yet.
Greg and I have read our share of Frida Kahlo books over the years, so for us, visiting here brings the stories we already know to life. We've also been here several times, but the museum itself has changed. A new section of the museum now houses Frida Kahlo's outfits. These more personal items show us the connection that Frida had to her Mexican identity, while at the same time helping us understand how the long traditional skirts she favored helped to shift the focus towards her upper body and away from her polio-damaged lower half. Frida wore different height shoes. One shoe was always a platform, while the other had a flatter heel. The loose-fitting traditional huipil blouses she favored were roomy enough to allow for the medical corsets that became part of her normal daily life. Frida's style might have been fashion born of necessity, but she turned it into a medium of artistic and political expression. These personal items of makeup, jewelry, clothing, crutches and corsets, and her false leg were locked away in Frida's bathroom by order of Diego Rivera, who left instructions that the room should not be opened until 15 years after his death. The personal items included intimate correspondence between Frida and some of her lovers. These deeply personal items enable us to see that Frida was not limited or defined by her physical ailments and restrictions. She was much more than one body could contain. As Frida once wrote in her diary, Feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? If you've enjoyed this week's video, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you again next week.